Everybody, it's Tyler here at Space City, checking with 231N Nice Robotics. This robot has a lot of great creative features on it that we'll be focusing here on Pits and Parts. A couple things that we really want to talk about here, you got to check out this like lifting uh, intake that they have, but not just that, but how they're actually meshing their gears when it comes down here. One of the most unique things I've seen on a robot so far as well. A lot of great stuff. I love their overall build quality that they're doing with this robot. I'll uh, be talking about how they're able to score over the mobile goal and the wall stakes as well too. So a lot of great strategy that's gone into this robot. Let's learn more about them coming up here on Pits and Parts. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Grow Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit RECF.org and get connected. Hobby, let's take a look at this drive here. When you and I were talking before, you're going with a little bit different motor config than what a lot of teams are using, so talk to me more about it. All right. So usually people use the other uh, blue motors, but we don't use, oh, I'm sorry. We don't use blue motors, we use the other 300 RPM motors because most people use those motors for, for speed and everything. But we chose, we chose an easier route only because the fact that we want it more, we want more speed, but at the same time, we also don't want to burn up our motors too fast. So the main problem we have with it is that we haven't had any breakdowns or nothing with it. It's not really a problem, but the only problem I think we've had was our air tank on the side hitting one of the gears down here, but we fixed that problem a while ago. So it's kind of a small error we had, but it's nothing too major. So when you're gearing up for speed though, you do sometimes sacrifice torque out of doing that as well too. Uh, you know, how did that uh, payoff work out for you? Like when you're looking at math strategy, why was that the right way for your team to go? Well, it was more so the fact that we wanted to make sure our robot would be stable enough to compete and go against other robots head to head in a push off. If, is it, let's say we're getting defended, heavy, heavily defended on our robot, we want to make sure we're okay enough to keep scoring and not get our goal taken out from here, I, but still having enough power to keep it pushed into the corner without having anyone take them out. Thomas, let's talk about this uh, arm overall on the robot. I mean, overall just uh, going with more of a squish wheel uh, <laughs> aspect of it, but going up and in and the way you're scoring on wall sticks is really interesting. So talk to me more about this whole structure here. So throughout the whole season, we noticed that a lot of people have the same type of design of a chain system with hooks. So I saw one team, I forgot the number, but they inspired me to create this type of type of intake, which actually lifts all the way up. As you can see, it goes all the way up and is able to score on the high stakes as well. As well. Our intake, it goes from two five watt motors to three five watt motors because of the gear meshing that we have on the bottom. So this is one of the key things with my intake is that I'm always gonna have enough power, either grabbing rings from the floor or grabbing rims or pushing the rings all the way to the top, to the goal. And our gear ratio and our RPMs, we go from 400, 400 to 200. And we go from 400 to 200 just for the purpose of having enough torque to push this up, which helps us again, load the ring into the mobile goal. <coughs> so our arm, it's kind of key also with our strategy, which we're going to be talking about later on. So a couple of things I want to follow up with that on, with the gear meshing that you're doing, like, first off, like when you were designing this robot, how did you even like come up with like, you want to do that? And do you have any issues with any like uh, gear slippage or anything like when those come back together? So I've been having a lot of issues with it. And I knew this was going to be a cost of having this type of design, but how we designed the robot, it is very common. But good thing we have two of them on each side. So let's say that the arm does kind of bend a little bit or twist. There's always one gear touching the other gear, which is, has saved us multiple times. The other thing I want to ask you too, you know, some of the other teams we've talked to that have done this, this kind of like lifting intake, so to speak, most of them just kind of go straight through uh, with their ring, but you almost have implemented kind of like a hood almost on the end as well too. Have you seen that that's really helped you be more successful in scoring on wall stakes? On wall stakes? It's a little bit tricky, but with practice, anything can be done. I think I have been, I've been perfecting my high wall stakes, even my alliance side. But yeah, it's been an issue, but I think I want to have a design that could also score from the mobile goal to the wall stakes as easy as possible. Can you show me how that process works with bringing one in and how that, how that lifts up? Intake. Okay, stop, stop.
Let's talk about this uh, bottom intake. We mentioned a little bit about it, but you know, I see a little bit of compliancy on it. There's obviously a lot of great design that goes into it. Tell me a little bit more how that functions. So the bottom intake functions with the top intake, again, with the gears, but we also have a different gear system from the top. We go from a 200 RPM on a 5 watt motor and we gear it down to a 12. So a 24 to a 12, which goes to 400 RPMs. From the bottom, it goes 400 and it goes up to 200. One of the things with our top intake is that the amount of friction we have and the material selection kind of is important to us because we tried different materials and we got a lot of friction. So one of the major things that we focus on the top intake is having not a lot of compression in between the wheels and the plexiglass or the, the plastic. And another thing is the perfect spacing. Our rings fit perfectly inside of the intake to the point that there's always gonna be at least one wheel touching the rings at all time. So looking at going from a squish wheel versus like some of the belt intakes I've seen out there, uh, did you just find that overall that you're just able to get more contact on it or like what was the overall benefit for you going squish wheels? I think the benefit was of having again more contact, which I think I'd rather, now that we're later on into the season, I think a chain system works better. But at the beginning, I think this was working really good for me and it still has been working good to me. But again, I like having more contact over speed. This is accurate. This can score when I want to score. Well, obviously, as we're filming the signature event, you're doing phenomenal so far. So Thank it's got to be working out pretty well for you. As we start to wrap up, talk to me a little bit about some of your mat strategy, how you uh, are approaching here at Space City. And maybe do you see that mat strategy evolving throughout the process here at Space City for you? So some of the strategy that this robot is really good at is able to score in the high stakes while still holding on into a goal. I see a lot of people that are able to hold on to a goal, but not being able to do high stakes, wall stakes, my bad and this robot could do them easily. So let's say that we're in a match where all the goals already filled out. People are just grabbing goals, throwing them to the negative. I don't want that. I want to keep my goal with me at all times. So I have possession of it, but I also still want to be able to score more points. So this is one of our major strategies with this robot is that we can still be scoring while still containing our goal. Yeah, all offense maybe, right? So yep. I feel it. So, hey, uh, two, three, uh, two, 231 and thank you so much for taking time to tell us more about this machine. I love the design overall. A lot of great iterations you've gone through. And of course, we wish you best of luck here at Space City. So thanks a lot. Thank you. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Girl Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit recf.org and get connected.